Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Voice of the Voices. We're joining you from Columbus, Ohio, MatsuriCon. And today I have with me a very special guest, Erica Mendez. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Busy con and everything's like really spaced out this year. I yeah, think they've yeah. grown quite it's a bit. Huge. So we have a few questions here for you. Uh, first off is, how did you get into voice acting? I got in through my love of, well, I became interested in it because of my love for animation and video games, and, you know, I just kind of searched for stuff relating to that, um, voiceover specifically, because it was kind of cool to find out that there are these people that just do the characters' voices, and that kind of became more apparent when Final Fantasy X came out. Oh, right. That was the first, like, big Final Fantasy game, um, and I loved Final Fantasy at the time that had voice acting in it, so it was it was cool getting to, like, find out who, was, who were the voices, and, like find out that other people were interested in stuff like that. So I just kept searching and researching stuff and kind of fell into it, honestly. That's cool. So uh, we have a show here, a couple of shows that we would like, like to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. First one is Ald Noah Zero. Yes. How is it like working on that? That one was interesting because it's the first mech show I've ever done. And, you know, you know your typical Gundams and... I, I guess I don't think Astro Boy is a mech show, but like I, I can't think of any other mech shows than Gundam because Gundam is like yeah. really the big thing. Robotech. Robotech, Zoids, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of a mech show. But uh, yeah, it's my first time working on one, so I've never like been a character that's mm -hmm. piloted anything. So that was pretty cool, being able to shout out the uh, like military command kind of stuff, and I really enjoyed that. Another show you worked on, uh, a NIST show, one of their two dubs, I believe now yes. it is, A Lull in the Sea. What was it like working on that? That show is beautiful. It's actually kind of funny because I first tried watching it a while back before the dub was even, like, before we got auditions, before we knew it was being dubbed. And I actually didn't like it because it was weird for me from an animation standpoint that they live underwater, but they could freely, like, walk around and swim around whenever they pleased. Um, so I kind of left it alone for a little while. And then I got the auditions for Akari and Sayu, I think I auditioned for also. And I ended up getting Akari, so I watched the show to kind of get a feeling for my character and the rest of the series, and I fell in love with it. It was just so amazing, and there's so many emotional moments, and I love Akari as a character, and so many of the other characters are so great, too. Yeah. A lot of NAS shows are really, really great yeah. um, storylines. Yeah. A lot of feels. Oh, yeah, so many feels. <laughs> uh, another show you worked on um, that getting to read up, uh, Sailor Moon. What was it like joining the Sailor Moon cast? Very intimidating because, you know, it's got such a long history. It's what, tw their 20th anniversary just happened. Yeah. And um, this is the first time in English that Uranus and Neptune are kind of get to be themselves in a way because, you know, they had the whole like rela related thing in the old dub. So we finally get to see them in their true relationship. Right. Um, you know, whether they're, like, lovers or, like, really good friends or, like, whatever they consider themselves because um, they don't really specifically mention it, I think. And that's the beauty of it, I think. So it's it's really great going through that and kind of finding out, like, how they come to be and, like, fit in with the other Guardians. And another show you worked on, Sailor Moon, which also had a huge fan following before Season 2. What was it like joining that? Yeah, sort of online too. I did? <laughs> it's been a long weekend, guys. I'm sorry. That's okay. Sword Art Online 2. Yes. That one was exciting because I actually haven't seen a lot of Sword Art. I watched the first season and I was kind of like, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting. They're in like a video game. It's kind of like dot hackish. Um, so I ended up watching pretty much just my character, Yuki. I watched her arc and instantly fell in love with her. She's such a great character. And it was an interesting uh, recording session for uh, one of the last scenes um, before the end of the series. And I, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, they had me laying in a chair for that last session okay. just to kind of like get a really relaxed feel to my reads. And it was probably one of the most interesting sessions I've ever had because I've never sat down or laid down for a session before. Yeah, you always hear you know, different actors, they kind of like do all these like weird positions sometimes yeah. to get certain voices. So, yeah. yeah, I don't think I've heard laying down before. Yeah, That's pretty cool. First time I've heard of it, honestly. And speaking of uh, Yuki, what was it like working on Yuki Ina as a hero? That was a good segue. That's a really good yeah. segue. <laughs> um, that one was really fun. I've never been a part of a real magical girl show. I kind of joke that Kill a Kill is kind of a magical right. girl show in a way, but yeah, this is the I first 
true magical girl show that I've been in. And I've heard comparisons to Monica, which I actually haven't seen yet. I've been meaning to, but I haven't. Um, but it's just kind of, it's one of those shows that kind of fools you. Like you think you're getting into this like really cute um, schoolgirl anime with these, you know, with four or five girls. I can't remember how many at right now because, it, yeah, it has been right. a long weekend. But, um, and it's just, the story just is, gets so emotional and dark. And it's really cool to see the transition between the everyday life and then the life where they have to, like, fight for their lives, basically, and right. save humanity. Reminds me a lot of... Puella Madoka Magica. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. oh, it starts off really sweet, and then you're like, oh. Yeah. It just gets really dark. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything that you'd like to talk about or plug that you've recently worked on that you can, that talk, can talk about? about. There's so many things that I can't talk about that I'd love to, but the one thing that I can talk about is Danganronpa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls, really oh, okay. long title, so it's hard to remember the order of the words but I play Nagisa Shingetsu in that he's one of the kids that like really hates adults so he wants to uh, him and the other four kids want to destroy like all of the adults in the world and just have kids run around freely um, but that one's really exciting because I love the first two games and this one's kind of like a bridge between the first two right. games but I think you can play it without having played Is the that other one on two the Wii? I think that one's on no that one's on the the Vita but the you can Vita. also get okay. a PSTV and play it and, oh, okay. which is much cheaper like it's right. forty dollars right yeah. now I think so um, I, I would suggest it because it's a really good series. It's like a, a murder mystery kind of comedy visual novel. Okay. So it's it's really yeah, great. I and enjoyed I, the first one, the really first really Danganronpa. So. Well, just in case if fans haven't watched our first interview with you, could you share with them your social media so they can get in contact you, with you or follow you? Yes. If you search Erica Mendez voice actress on Facebook, I forget what the exact URL is. I think it's Erica Mendez VO. Mm -hmm. um, but on Facebook, I have a Facebook page for everyone to follow me there. And I, you know, constantly write up my role announcements and which cons I'm going to. And I have uh, Instagram and Twitter, which I use more frequently than my my fan, but my Facebook fan page. And my username there is Sunderica. It's like a cross between Sundere right. and Erica. So it's S or no T S U N D E R I C A on Twitter and Instagram. Well, thanks for joining us today, Erica. It was a pleasure getting to interview yes. again. And sorry for my flub. That's okay. <laughs> Where do you go, guys? I'm Ansel. I'm Erica Mendez. We'll see you next time.